Ah, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into applications of integrals and now deal further into arc length and now look at arc length as a function. Uh, basically, it is oftentimes useful to have a function that measures the arc length of a curve from, from a particular starting point to another point on the curve and we can easily develop this uh, through basically considering arc length using the formula to develop a function instead. So thus, if a smooth surface has the equation y equals f of x for a is less than equal to x, less than equal to b, and then let s of x be the distance along c from the initial point p0 uh, of, uh, of, a, of, of x equals a and y equals f of a to the point, just the gen general point x and f of x or q, point q then s is a function called the arc length function and from the arc length formula what we will develop that but first I just want to draw it quickly what I mean by this so this is x this is y curve so if this is a random curve like that and let's say we want to get from this point this is p0 up to this point q and this is just a general point x right here let's just keep going here so here it's from B to um, yeah, A right here. This is at A. So the A, that's F of A, and this is Y equals to F of X. Yeah, so basically along this line, yeah, so along this line, this is always from here to here, is this is the S of X function right here. And then as you change X, you'll be able to get a yeah, a different value for the length of the curve. So basically that's the idea is develop a function for it. And when I go over an example in my next video, it'll be more clear. And from the arc length formula, like I uh, went over my earlier videos on arc length formula, what we have here, this function S of X with arc length function. So instead of from A to B, we go from A to X. And this will just be the integral from A to X. And then the number of the formula, this is just one plus, and then it's a derivative of the function f of x, but in this case, I'll just deal with the function t instead. So f of t, the derivative of function f of t, and, I'll, and we're, just, we're just switching the variable t just because we don't want to have x two meanings, dt right here. And this, this variable could be anything, it doesn't. And basically, uh, as I just stated, make a note that we've just replaced the variable of integration x so that uh, x does not have two meanings. So we just replace it with t right here. So we replace this one with t, just we're dealing with that, just because we have this x right there. And now if we use part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, let me see more on that in my earlier video, it basically says the integrand is the integral, I mean it's the derivative of this overall integral, to differentiate uh, s of x or the curve, curve length or the arc length function, etc. Since the integrand is continuous and we know it's continuous, if the function is continuous, then this length is always going to be well continuous as well. So what we have now is by the uh, part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, ds over dx, the derivative of this is just this integrand. That's just basically that. So this equals two, one plus, and then now we're just going to get back, so we take the variable t out of there, just deal with x right there. This is a, the derivative of x right here. And again, the variable, this is just for uh, writing it in the integral, it doesn't uh, change anything. So this is derivative of f prime of x. And again, this equals to, if you write it in Lebanese notation, uh, like I showed in the arc length video, f prime of x, that is just dy over dx, over the derivative. And I'll just write it, let's see, regular bracket squared. And now what's interesting here is that this shows that the rate of change of s with respect to x is always at least one. And that's because, well, if you look at here, this is always positive. So this is always greater than zero. So you have minimum of square root one or just one. And this is just the rate of change of the curve uh, with x. And it's equal to, and it's equal to one when the derivative of prime of x or the slope of the curve is zero. So this is zero, then basically the derivative of s or the rate of change of it is equal to one. And you can just see what I mean by that. And, and you can see why it should be one is when you have, let's say a function that's, for, that's perfectly horizontal like this. This is, let's say the derivative here, f prime 
uh, of x equals to zero. So in this case, this is always gonna be, well, one is the rate of change. So let's go from one to two, and this is our delta x. Our delta x is exactly the same length as our delta s right here. That's just length of the curve is just the, well, delta x. So delta x equals to delta s, or, or we have delta x over delta s equals to one. So, or, so the rate of, I mean, the other way around actually. Yeah, actually, other way around, I'll just flip it around. Delta S over delta X equals to one. So the rate of change of the of the curve or the arc length function is just one. So the length of the curve is increasing the exact same rate as this length of this, just of this delta X right here, from one to two. And now the differential of arc length. This again, if you see my earlier videos on differentials, this is just dealing with ds here by itself right here. So the, so the differential is just equal to ds. Let's move the dx to the right side. So one plus dy over dx this is squared and then times it by dx right there. And this is uh, sometimes written in the symmetric form or basically rearrange this. So what we do is let's just divide this d of x out and move it, move it over to the other side again. So we get, let's just go back to it. So we have ds over dx. And then let's just square both sides so we get this squared. So we get rid of the square root. So we have one plus dy over dx. And now what we could do is multiply. Yeah, multiply both sides by dx squared. So what we'll have is, is basically ds uh, squared, dx squared cancel. And then we have dx squared right here and then plus just, and then the dx squareds cancel here when you multiply. And then we have dy squared, and this is the symmetric form. So ds squared equals to dx squared plus dy squared. Yeah, now this one looks just like the, well, Pythagoras theorem kind of, and the geometric interpretation of the above equation is basically shown like here. So y x curve, I mean x axis. So let's say you have a function like this, this is our uh, y equals f of x curve. So what we have right here, or one way of interpreting this, is that the differential, let's say from here, let's say differential is gonna be, yeah, and recall the differential is just gonna be, well, uh, it's gonna, let's say a line like this, and, it, and it's when you multiply by dx right here, or infinitely small x value, let's say that is up to here. Let's go from here to here is our dx. And then when you multiply it by here, and since at this very point in this particular graph, this has a higher rate of change and it slows down as it flattens out. So then this is gonna be slightly higher than the exact uh, change right here. So this value right here, so from here to here, yeah, is the, let's say this would be the length of the curve uh, from across to here to here, um, if you were at, at if you were increasing at the exact rate of change over here, but the actual one is going to be this delta s right here from here to here, and similarly, uh, if you were increasing the curve rate at at this very exact point here for this delta x uh, interval right here, then the dy would be over across like this. Let's go. Uh, dy is going to be this full length, dy. And that's at this very rate because this rate's higher because it slows down as you as you go across here. So then this delta, this is the actual increase or, or, or change in y. So it's the actual increase and the dy and the ds are the, well, uh, estimated when you multiply by dx. That's because this is just a rate that we're multiplying by dx. And as you can see, this is basically a right angle triangle and it's, well, as you can see, ds, dx, dy can be interpreted uh, to get to here using the well, Pythagoras theorem. Yeah, and basically this interpretation, this geometric interpretation can be used as a minomanic, uh, I don't know, I can't pronounce that, device, or basically I, what I mean is a memory aid to remember the arc length formula when using, well, the Pythagorean theorem. So if we use Pythagorean theorem from here to there, <clears throat> so it's a good way to memorize, just think of the Pythagorean theorem and this graph, right? There's this triangle, then we can get back to 
uh, the curve, I mean the form of ds squared using Pythagoras and what we just wrote before equals to dx squared plus dy squared and then getting back to this divide everything by dx squared so we get uh, ds over dx and then this is squared and then we have one plus this cancels and over here we have dy over dx squared and then square root both sides so we have ds over dx equals two square root one plus dy over dx squared right here and we're only dealing with the positive of the square root because when you square root you also have the plus minus but in this case we already defined d of s in this case as positive it's a length of a curve kind of a negative length so so now, now you can get back to the arc length formula and arc length is just going to be equal to the integral of a to b of this uh, d yeah, of ds and then here you could just divide by uh, we'll multiply ds both sides so we get it over here and this equals 2 integral from a to b and 1 plus dy over dx squared then dx right there and similarly we could also work backwards to solve for the arc length formula when dealing with x as a function of y instead as i went over my earlier video as well so then going back back to the starting point ds squared just for completeness sake dx squared plus dy squared so now if we divide by dy squared on both sides as opposed to dx squared we get uh, ds over dy now squared equals 2 well dx over dy squared plus dy squared divided by dy squared that's just 1 and now square root both sides this cancels we're just left with ds is equal to oh, also just dy there and then again we're only considering the positive side of it then we have 1 plus uh, dx over dy squared and then we can multiply just divide multiply dy on both sides so we get this right here dy just move it over to the right side and then again the length formula arc length formula now we're just dealing with we're just dealing with x as a function of y and it's you're gonna get the same answer so this equals to integral from a to b of ds which equals 2 integral from a to b of square root 1 over dx over dy uh, squared and then dy and basically that's what we get over there a anyways that's all for today if you learned from this uh, pretty interesting video just just pretty much going in more detail of the arc length and writing arc length as a function as well as showing this uh, this geometric way or visual interpretation of it yeah as a function and and uh, yeah so stay tuned for my next video i'm going to go over this using this this formula as a function to basically find a function direct function of uh, of x of the curve length which you could find for any value in that uh, interval anyways all for today if you learned like always you can download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution